I'm gonna thank Bailey, the birthday king today, for pulling off some kind of LA Kings miracle. We are not back in the playoffs, but we still have a shot because we get two points tonight, guys. Two really, really big points. So happy birthday, Bailey. Congratulations. Uh, you inspired and rallied your team to an awesome overtime win against Smashville. It started out really fast-paced, really good Kings pressure. Cody McLeod, who now holds the NHL record this season for most amount of fighting majors. Congratulations, Cody. Uh, he gets into a scrap with, and it's more than a scrap because there were a lot of little scraps after the whistle tonight, but he gets into a full-on 50 cuffs with uh, Kyle Clifford two minutes into the game, and bam, we are off to the races. Things are happening. Uh... And of course, a lot of them were happening for the Kings. We're up, like out shooting them like nine to two with only a couple of minutes left in the second period. And, and what do the Kings do? Yeah, they give up the goal on the third shot because that is just so LA Kings come out completely gunning and doing everything right and everything they need to do except get those damn rebounds and yeah, give up the first goal. So that sucked and was kind of just so LA Kings, it makes me want to tear my hair out. Uh, but they got back in it. Iggy and Kopi and Gabo, and in real terms, that would be Jerome Aginla, Andre Kopitar, and Marion Gabrick, uh, were all on the top line together and they were finally, finally, finally getting some chemistry. Early in the second period, we get a power play, and for the first like minute, I'm sitting there thinking, oh dear God, this is going to be the game where we're officially done and we're out of the playoffs because we can't do a thing on the power play to save our lives. We can't clean up a rebound to save our lives. Dear God, Marion Gabrick, when, when did you stop playing hockey for us? Because it was sometime this season and it's just pissing me off. And then suddenly all of these things combine and uh, you've got Ledoux, who had been making some really good shots in the first period too, on the power play, gets to Gabrick. He takes the initial shot and Jerome Aginla stuffs in that rebound. So you have a power play goal. You have Jerome Aginla, his first goal as an LA King. You have Marion Gabrick actually doing something. You have chemistry on the lines. You have rebound, front of the net presence, and it's everything that I have been asking Daryl Sutter for. My prayers have been answered. The Kings did exactly what I've been telling them they need to do. And then proceeded to, you know, take a penalty. Thanks, Jake Muzzin. <sighs> yeah, I kind of hated him just then for a second. Uh, thankfully, the Kings power play is phenomenal and they got nothing from it. But they did get kind of momentum back and the Kings were really sitting back on their heels and Jonathan Quick was coming up big and by the end of the second period, you're kind of glad that the second period is over. Because while we did score a goal, maybe like four minutes in, that was about the highlight of the second period and then not a whole lot else happened that was good. There was a lot of Smashville pressure that luckily came to nothing. So we're 1-1, one, one, end of the second period. We come to the third period, and what do they do? Score within like 90 seconds. A rebound that should have been cleared. I want to say by Gabrick, that was possibly the first goal. But it was not good. It was thoroughly depressing, actually. And you're sitting there for about 10 minutes into the third period thinking, Dear God, how are we not making the playoffs this year? We have so many great players. Drew Doughty is a, like a one-man hockey team. There was a two-on-five rush. Literally five Predators back in their defensive zone. And Drew Doughty basically single-handedly leads the rest, continues the rest, gets the shot off waits in for enough time to let the other players come out so it's five on five but god the dude is amazing he is just absolutely holding this team together with like spit and glue and he's i love him true daddy please never leave our team please i know we can be frustrating at times but you're just my hero so drew was playing great the Kopi Aginla uh, Gabrick line was, was playing really good too. Uh, it just wasn't happening. We were not able to solve the, the story of Pecorine um, until they got another penalty. We score another power play goal. That's two power play goals in one game. Interesting. 
And we've only had two power plays. So I don't quite know what's happening here, but we're tied. And yay, we're back and, and things are going well. And it's possible that we're going to come out of this at least going into overtime. Though for the last like five minutes, particularly the last three, the Kings were like, no, we don't want to give up that extra point. We just want a regulation win. It's going to be great. And they did everything they could. There was a lot of Kings pressure. It was really, really nice to see. But of course, to no avail. Uh, we end up going into overtime. Some three on three magic, which ends up a four on three because we get our third power play of the evening and our third power play goal. I don't know if that's ever happened before, at least not recently, where we are three for three on the power play in one game. But I guess that's what we got Jerome again for, primarily. He has a hell of a power play shot. So we're setting stuff up in this four on three overtime. There's just that extra little bit of space that the Kings have to play with. And again, it's Gabrick to a Ginla. And one time shot, uh, just absolutely rockets by Rene there. And to everybody else's credit who had been on the ice, including Dowd and Brown, which I just absolutely loved seeing get some three on three overtime. There were plenty of really good chances. The Kings really did come out to play this uh, overtime. But again, was the one who gets it. Uh, actually, it may have been from Martinez, sorry, not, not Gabrick, but it's just, it was exactly what I wanted to see from the Kings. Except for the fact that they cannot score on five on five to save their lives. We'll nitpick that later. I'm sure there are plenty of other games where I'm going to be disappointed with that. But for now, I'm just going to be happy that Jerome Ginla got two goals with the LA Kings tonight. His line is finally clicking, which means we finally have four actual rolling lines. Dustin Brown, Nick Dowd, and I think Trevor Lewis were my third line. I love those three. Those three come out and play hard every night, and whether you see it in the scoreboard or not, they are making a difference, and Brown was just smashing the crap out of Smashville tonight. He puts in so much effort to his game every night. I don't see how you can fault this guy after everything that the club has kind of put him through. So... Lots of good things to come away from. Two points being the biggest thing. We are one point away from uh, the Blues. They have one game in hand, so let's not get too excited. But we do play them once more. So it is still possible for the Kings to be in the playoffs. So keep a, a tight watch. This is really going to be coming down to the wire if the Kings actually keep playing well. So fingers crossed that we keep getting more heart attacks in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and of course, as always, I leave you with um, the Chris Sutter dance cam. And you know what? Even if we get rid of Sutter, which I'm actually starting to think is not uh, a terrible idea, can we keep him on retainer to just come and do our dance cams every game? Because he is the life of Staples Center, I'm telling you. Los Angeles, number six, Jake Mason. Two minutes for Herbert. Time to 12.5.